Okay, it's time for our first test. So we're going to review everything that's going to be on our first test, although you had the summer quiz. And these were mostly two-step equations, but then at the end we added combining like terms. So we, the test will start easy, just like the lessons hopefully did. So there are going to be two-step equations to solve. All right? That is the constant on the same side as x. That's where you start. You must do everything to both sides. All right, so everything to both sides. What's the name of that rule? Right? You have to use the properties. Whoops, I got to spell it correctly. Properties of equality. All right, there are four of them. Adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. You just have to know it's the properties of equality that says... You have to do everything to both sides. 25 minus 14 is what? 11. That's x equals x divided by 9. You're going to multiply both sides by 9. And 99 equals x. Now, on the test, you're just going to type in 99. All right? You're not going to write the x equals. It's already there. It says in the test, x equals blank. Fill in, you know, just the number. Okay? But normally, you always write that. Track 13 from both sides, 6x, negative 13 minus, negative 35 minus 13 is the same as 35 plus 13, 48, although it's negative 48, right? Divide both sides by 6, and x equals negative 8. You write positive 8 on the test, you get 0 points, right? That's the opposite of the answer. Here, we're adding 8 to both sides. Oops, no, we are not. Oh, my goodness. We are adding 10 to both sides, and we're doing x divided by negative 7 equals positive 2. Right? Multiply both sides by negative 7. It has to be exactly the same number, and x equals negative 14. What is the coefficient in this problem? The coefficient in this problem is negative 1. You, there's going to be a question about that. All right? That's a negative 1 there. Right? But you start at the constant on the same side that x is on. So we have, I like to write the negative 1 in there. Please, I, every year I get students who will, I'll just show it in a second. They will tell me the answer is negative x equals 21, or the answer is 21. It's not 21, right? Because you have this, that's the opposite of x, the negative x. So we have to divide by negative 1, and x equals negative 21. You tell me positive 21, you get no points, right? You've forgotten right, that there is a coefficient of negative 1 there. Okay, what do the properties of quality state? You have to do everything to both sides. What is the one value that makes an equation true called? It's called the solution, all right? All right? Most of my problems say solve, all right? But when you're solving, you are finding the solution. You solve equations, you evaluate expressions. We've been solving equations. Last, uh, in the unit zeros, we were evaluating expressions. So find the solution here. Now this one trips people up sometimes. You subtract nine, because that's positive nine. Right? It has nothing to do with this minus 2x. All right, so it's neg that minus 2x automatically becomes negative 2x. 3 minus 9 is negative 6. Divide both sides by negative 2, and x equals positive 3. Right? And if you're, never, if you're ever not sure on a problem on the test, right, you can check your work. Because right? 2 times 3 equals 6. 9 minus 6 equals 3. Yeah, it checks out. Now, you're only going to have an hour for the test, so I would check the ones you're nervous about. Right? What's the coefficient here? It's a fraction, right? But we start in the same place, the constant on the same side that x is on. So how do you get rid of a coefficient fraction? You multiply both sides by the reciprocal. Now, you could clear the fraction here, but it's not going to save you any work, right? We, that Clearing the fraction is for when there's lots of fractions. All right, so the, here, we're just going to multiply both sides by 7 halves. That's how you say that reciprocal, the plural of 1 half. Those cancel out because 7 halves times 2 sevens is 1, and 1x equals x. 
And so look for this canceling right there. It's almost always there in a Mr. Ben problem because I do not like you to use a calculator. It's totally unnecessary. All right, those cancel out and the only value X could be the solution is 35. Okay, so we're the perimeter is already known here. It's 40 inches, right? Please, perimeter is always add up all the sides. It could be a six-sided shape, a, a three-sided shape. Can't have a two-sided shape. And so we have L plus L plus 4 plus 4. Yes, and you're allowed to skip right to 2L plus 8 equals 40. Subtract 8 from both sides. 2L equals what? 30? Is that 32? and divide both sides by two, and L equals 16 inches. Now on your homework, you always write inches. Again, on the test, I am going to say oh, that inches will already be there and say just type in the number. That way we don't have any mistakes with the computer. Right, so you're not gonna type L equals either. You're just gonna type in 16 on the test. Okay, one of the tougher problems on the test, right? So it's rate times whatever variable plus the constant equals the total. Now, the tree has grown 15 feet in five years. The rate is not there yet, right? We have to calculate the rate. Sometimes they give you the rate. It's growing whatever X amount of feet per year. But here you have to calculate it. So the rate is 15 feet in five years, also known as three feet per year, right? Per year not hour year all right per feet per year is the key one of the keys to rate so this one says 15 feet in in five years so three is our coefficient it says use y for years again you want to know what you're talking about where would we start well when it was planted in the ground it was 12 feet tall and the total feet is 99 feet we're subtracting 12 from both sides three y equals 87 divide by 3 and 3 goes into 87 well it goes into 8 whoops goes in 8 twice and 27 9 and so to get 99 feet tall will take 27 years and you'll just type in 27 on the test all right another thing that will trip up some people all right the water level is dropping here, just like a candle burning down. And what that means is the rate is going to be negative. So let's see. Trank sprung a leak and the water level started to drop from 22 meters. So we started at 20. This is always a plus. There are no ones where that's a minus. Okay. The rate is 8 meters every 4 hours. Well, that means 2 meters per hour, right? 2 meters per hour. So the rate is 2 meters per hour. And we're trying to find how long it will take the water level to drop. So you could use T for time or H for hours. I did not specify. Oops, uh, let's be a little neater here. So it's 2H plus 22. And notice on the other problems, the biggest number always goes over here. But because the water level is dropping, the total is not the biggest number. All right. And so what's wrong here? I forgot the negative. Some of you are going to forget the negative. You're going to get an answer. And it's not going to make any sense. So please be careful of this. All right, so you subtract 22 from both sides. Negative 2H, well, 22 minus 3, right? You can't subtract with a smaller number up top. It doesn't work. And so you get negative 2H equals negative 19. In these problems, you'll always get two negatives there. All right, and divide both sides by negative 2. And so you know, 18 divided by 2 is 9, so negative 19 divided by negative 2 is 9.5 hours. Yeah, you could put 9 hours and 9.5 hours, but why would you? Okay. Okay, so we're going to find which equa equation is equivalent here. The key to this is that you have to realize if you move the decimal twice here, you must move the decimal twice in all the locations. So if I move it twice there to make this 3x, I have to move it twice everywhere. So this becomes 3x, but this becomes 720, right? Because there's an empty space there. It's not just move it to the end, it's move it the same amount of times. So 
So that means it looks like it has to be A. So, and let's make sure this is 1800 or 1800, it is. All right, clearing fractions, right? You have to pick a number big enough to clear both the five and the 10, right? Five will not get rid of this 10. You have to pick 10. So you pick 10 and you have to do it everywhere, including to the seven, because you have to do it to both entire sides. So this 10 and this five, this five becomes a one. This 10 becomes a two. Two times X is two X. So it doesn't look like A is gonna be right. Then tens cancel and you get minus three. So it's looking like it's gonna be the last one. Let's make sure it's right. Yes, it's 70, right? We're clearing fractions and decimals, right? Over here, when we move this decimal point, what's going on is if you move, you're multiplying the entire side by 100. If you multiply by 10, then it moves once. If you multiply by 100, it moves twice. If you multiply by 1,000, it moves three times. So there will be questions like that where you're not finding the solution. You're picking the multiple choice one that's equivalent. Okay, so now you're solving one with decimals. Now you could solve it with the decimals in it. You're perfectly allowed to do that. But I am going to move them all once. So that means this first one has to become 20. Then 20 equals 3x plus 9 is the equation I'm going to solve. It has the exact same answer. It's equivalent to the original one. Subtract 9 from both sides. And 20 minus 9 whoops, is 11 equals 3x. Divide both sides by 3. And so the answer is 11 thirds. Am I allowed to leave that? Yes, because it's simplified. Could I also put what? 9 thirds is 3, right? So 11 thirds is 3 and 2 thirds. I could also put that. Why would I ever make this a decimal? I have memorized that 2 thirds is 0.6 repeating. Any of those are correct. But improper fractions are fine as long as they're simplified. Okay, this is one that usually trips people up, right? We're clearing both x and 5, right? So when it's 2 and 5, right, we, we could multiply by 10, do 10 and clear both of those. With 5 and x, we're going to multiply both sides by 5x. So the x's cross out and you get 5 times 3 is 15. The 5's cross out over here and you get 7 uh, times x is 7x. Is that the exact same thing as cross multiplying? Yeah, it is, right? Cross multiplying is what you teach sixth and seventh graders because they don't know about the rules of multiplying everything uh, on both sides. They don't know how to clear a fraction, but it is the exact same rule. If you want to do it with cross multiplying, that's fine, all right? But the answer here is 15 sevenths equals X, or you could write two and one seventh. You really don't want to make one seventh a decimal. So one seventh as a decimal, get out a calculator, you'll see it's a horrible, horrible repeating decimal. That happens anytime you have seven or 14 or 21, anything from the seven times table down there. Makes a horrible repeating decimal. All right, then we got combining like terms. So we're gonna combine our like terms. We get negative 20, four X plus X is five X. Negative 3 plus 10, that minus 3 automatically becomes a negative 3 without doing anything, it is plus, positive 7, which automatically becomes plus 7 without really doing anything. Once you get the two-step, it's all the same as everything else. Negative 27 equals 5x. Right? Notice that we're, you know, you're going to have nice, easy ones that come out whole. But you're now in algebra class. We're going to have answers that are fractions. You can write negative 27 fifths here. 25 fifths is 5, so you could also write negative 5 and 2 fifths. I don't know why you do that. You could also write negative 5.4, write 2 fifths is 4 tenths. All of those are correct. But please, on the test, you are just typing in the answer. You are not writing x equals, but don't forget your negative sign. This answer was negative. I was just, just double checking my work there for a second. So negative x plus 5x, negative 8x plus 5x is negative 3x, 9 minus 10. 9 minus 10 is negative 1. Add 1 to both sides, negative 3x equals 15. Divide both sides by negative 3, x equals negative 5. Basic combining like terms problem. All right, and another thing that might, is gonna mess up some of you is the means problems, all right? So to find a mean, 
right? You add up all the numbers, right? You sum the numbers, and then you divide by the number of items, and that gives you the mean. So you hopefully did that in sixth grade or seventh. Now, now with last year, maybe you didn't do it in seventh, but you should have done it in sixth. So what you do here is you already know the mean, right? We want to get a 90. We want to get an A in the class, right? And we have a total of five tests. We've taken four. So we've taken four. I got an 89, or Daniel did, an 89, 91, 86, and 98. And don't forget X. I didn't leave room. I'll put it at the beginning. Right? That's the next test. That's test five. Okay? I put that little hint there to remind you that there are five tests. Four you've taken, one you haven't. So 89 plus 91 very nicely adds up to 180, right? And 86 plus 98, 14, uh, 184, I think, so, right? So we have 180 plus 184. Let me just double check my work. Sometimes Mr. Ben goes too fast. Yeah, that's 180. Okay, so and then 4, 16, 364. So it's 364 plus X divided by 5 equals 90, right? Now we have to clear the fraction, which is multiply both sides by 5. And you get 364 plus X equals 450. Divide both uh, uh, subtract 364 from both sides. And this is the score we need to get an A, 90. So we're going to borrow 10 minus 4 is 6. This is 4. Borrowing 14 minus 6 is 8, and so we need an 86 on the last test, right? Because we've done, you know, we've gotten a 98, right, on a test, so that gives us a chance. To, so even if we get a B on this last test, an 86, we will still get an A overall in the class. All right, two planes start in the same place. One flies north. And the other flies south. All right, so the key, you have to read that because you have to know if they're going in opposite directions or the same direction. So we're going 250 that way, 300 that way. Remember, this is that rate. There's two rates. Rate times time plus rate times time equals the distance. And so we have a 250T and a 300T. And we're going a total of 1,650 miles. So 250 plus 300 is 550T equals 1,650. Divide both sides by 550T, which looks like it might be hard, but these zeros cross out. And I think 55 goes into 165 exactly three times. And this is hours, right? Miles per hour. So it must be. And if you're nervous, let's double check 55 into 165. I have the advantage of having written the problem and I know that I made it come out nicely. All right, so the last thing we did was consecutive integers, and that will also be the last thing on the test. So four consecutive integers that sum to negative 78. So we need four of them. So an n, we need, they're going to be right in a row. So n plus 1, n plus 2, and n plus 3 are the four consecutive integers. And we're going to add those up, and they're going to have to negative 78. So n, 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 and n add up to 4n. 1 plus 2 plus 3 adds up to 6. Then you have a two-step equation, 4n, negative 78 minus 6 is negative 84, right? Because you're adding negative 6. Divide both sides by 4. Now, that equals negative 21. Now, you're not done. So on the test, what there'll be is four spots for you to put numbers in. So you put in a negative 21, then what's the next one? Negative 20 then negative 19, then negative 18. And if you're not sure, add those up and make sure they add up to negative 78. No using a calculator on the test. I've made all the numbers come out nicely. You'll find out all year. I don't, I'm not like the test book, textbook. I don't make answers come out, uh, you know, 7.365, unless we're actually, you know, that's part of learning that day, right? I make them come out nicely. Find three consecutive odd integers that sum to 39, all right? So the key isn't really that it's odd, is that we're skipping numbers. So we have n, n plus 2, and n plus 4, right? We're skipping numbers here, so you're not going to do 1, 2, 3. 
So when there was three of them, and they have to add up to 39. That's what sum means. n, n, and n add up to 3n. 2 plus 4 is 6. Subtract 6 from both sides. 3n equals 9 minus 6 is 3. 33 divide by 3. n is 11. So you're not done. Right? So three consecutive odd integers. So we need odd numbers. L, L, L 11. 13 and 15 are the three numbers that sum to 39. So we're practicing. All right, this is probably the toughest problem we did. All right, it can be a little confusing. An oil company is drilling a hole at two feet per hour. So we're going down two feet every hour. We'll use H for hours, it doesn't say. Where did we start? We started at six feet above sea level, right? This is supposed to be sea level. This is supposed to be a hill. If you didn't understand that last time I showed this. And you're going down 32 feet below sea level, right? It says 32 feet below sea level. So that's the equation. All right, please, some people start spinning that around. I really don't recommend it. The people who do that usually end up messing up. This is always a plus here. We always start at a positive in these problems. It's very hard to create ones where you start with a minus there. But this coefficient, yes, flips to negative. Whenever we're burning a candle, the water level is dropping, or we're drilling down. All right, once you get your two-step, and you will be asked to type in an equation, all right, and so you will have to write this equation, and then you will have to also, you'll have ones where you just do that, and you'll have other ones where you do that and solve it. And so you get what negative 38 here, right? Because plus negative six, divide both sides by negative two. You'll know you've done these right because you'll get two negatives there, which turn into a positive. 40 divided by two is 20, so this must be 19. And so it's 19 hours. And in the solution, you will just type in 19. All right. So here it doesn't say solve it. It says write an equivalent equation. So what do you multiply by? By 10. So this becomes 1. This becomes a 2. But these all cancel. And you get 2 times 2 is 4x. Be careful there, right? There's a 2 and a 2 there. These cancel. You get minus 3. And it equals 7. That's the equivalent equation. It has the same answer as that one with fractions in it. What mathematical property states that operations done to both, both sides results in equivalent equations? The property or properties of equality. Property, property, property of equality. I asked which one, so it's singular. But all right, there are four of those. Find X if the total cost of two pens, two pencils, and two erasers was $3. All right, we did this with combining like terms. All right, so a pen is 3x, and we have two of those. We have a pencil, which is x, and we have two of those. And we have two erasers, which were 2 times 50 cents equals $3. So 2 times 3x is 6x, plus 2 more x, and 2 times 0 0.5, 0 0.5 times 2, 5 times 2 is 10, right? So 2 of those is a dollar. And we get 8x plus 1 equals 3. Subtract 1 from both sides. 8x equals 2. Divide both sides by 8. Right? You're not going to say a pencil costs 2 eighths. So you're absolutely not going to say that because it's not simplified. And you're really not going to say it costs 1 fourth. It costs 1 fourth of a dollar. Right? You could say that 1 fourth of a dollar. All right? But typically, right, you would say 1 fourth of a dollar is how many cents? One fourth of a dollar is 25 cents, right? One fourth is 0.25. That's point. That's how you would typically write this answer. X is 25 cents. You write the dollar sign. You say cents. Good luck on the test. Do not start it until you've done your homework and you're totally ready. Last year, I had some people who wanted to peek at the test. As soon as you peek at the test, it, the clock starts, right? And you have one hour to finish once you start.